Who am I? My name is Faisal, Faisal Lula. I'm 31 years old. I was born and bred in East London. My family is originally from India. Well, I've been calling myself an artist for about five years, since about 2010, 11 ish. It's now 2016, so it's been a few years that I've been consciously on this sort of journey. And I do lots of different things, you know, I paint, I draw, I write, I sculpt, music, film, fashion, you know, the life is inspiring. It's just layers of information and it's in that way that me I'm just kind of joining it together because that's what creativity is isn't it creativity is taking two things that shouldn't be together put them together and then all of a sudden you have something new and this is what you present to the people oh we we get on very well uh, he's he's a crazy guy he's someone who thinks on his feet and thinks very very quickly um, he's got a very quick mind I, I didn't know quite what he did when, when he first arrived here and it just looked like I don't know, I just thought, how does, how does some, someone like this um, make it work? I was being creative ever since I was a kid, you know, I was observing the world. When I look at my reports that my teachers were writing when I was a little kid, you know, it was like, oh, creative play, da 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 da, -da. you know, always I excel at the creative things. And in that way, I just sort of progressed with it through the educational system. I left university sort of just about because, you know, I used to like questioning the system. You know, the teachers used to give us a brief and I used to go in and be like, excuse me, your brief doesn't really make much sense because it's a bit morally unsound. What you're telling me to tell the people doesn't make sense. They used to be like, just go and do the project, you know what I mean? So it was like, okay, fair enough. But I didn't really know where to put the creativity. My teachers, when I left, they were telling me, go into advertising, go into advertising, become a copywriter, become a copywriter. And I was like, no, I don't want to be a copywriter. I don't want to sell the creativity in that way. I knew I was creative. I knew I used what I, saw, what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to apply it into the real world because I just come out of the educational system. I mean, I never wanted to do graphic design. I wanted to do fine art, but coming from a traditional background, the parents were like, where's that going to get you in life? So I went and did graphic design. You know, while I was doing it, I hated it because there were so many rules and regulations. And me, I came from a fine art background. So I was used to just being free, you know. To be creative, you need to join things together. So you need to go out, you need to have life experiences. The more you experience, the more you can join together. And this is what we do, we're joining everything together. So then I spent some time sort of working odd jobs, working in retail. I've been working in retail since I was about 17. You know, working in so many different shops, like everywhere, you know, managing space. I used to love space, you know, it's like, okay, you got all these things and you've got to put it into this kind of space. And you're like, okay, how can you fit it in? And you have to be creative with it. You know, even the most mundane things, I used to make them creative. It was just in my nature. You see, it was even when it didn't need to be applied, you just made it that way because it was part of who you were. So it was from there that I started to really kind of think, okay, how can I make money? So I started to sell little postcards on the streets, on near the River Thames and all these touristy places. And I was doing this for a little while. And then I realized you can't sell on the streets of London because it's obviously illegal and, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. And at this time I started going to the markets like Brick Lane and Greenwich and all these kind of places. And then I was in Brick Lane for about two, three years selling my stuff out of the markets every weekend as well as working a normal job, you know, Monday to Friday. It's just like seven days a week for like two, three years, you know, like working, working, working. I had debts to pay off. I had to pay off my debts, blah, 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 blah. you know, so from that it was... Um, I met somebody and she was talking to me and she was like, you need to get out of London. You need to get out of London, you need to stop working in this other job, you need to focus on the creativity, blah 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 blah. So at this point, like in the last two, three years being in Brick Lane on the weekends, everybody had been telling me about Berlin, 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 Berlin. So I was like, okay, let's go to Berlin. So booked a ticket to Berlin, didn't know what was going to happen, didn't know anybody out there, blah blah blah. And then sort of met up with an amazing group of people. But but it was super, super inspiring for me because I went out there, I had a bit of savings, so I found a studio and then I was surrounded by all these creative people. You know, it was the first time in my life that I had creative people around me. And in this process I started to learn things. Like I said, I was producing so much work that I needed to start working in the corridor outside my room. So I started opening my door. I was 24-7 there, so people knew I was there, so they would always come and speak to me and talk to me all the time. I had this process, I didn't have the time to just sit there talking to them all day. I had to carry on working. So I used to carry on working and in this process, I realized that I started listening to people. I was like, hold on a second, don't you realize what you just said? Don't you realize what you just said? Let me write it down on a piece of paper. I was in the studio, so I had the paper there, the paint there. I just put them together and I started writing what people had said to me. From this process, it started a new way of sort of thinking for me. For me, I've always been like writing for myself in my notebooks. 
this is always for me. But it translated, it started happening that I started to write for other people. And this is kind of when I started learning, sort of, that, oh, okay, this is sort of helping me to get more perspective. Because again, the more you talk to people, the more you understand, you know, at any given point, everybody's always talking about one thing. It's so always like this. So you're like learning about the different avenues of that. So this is my favorite word at the moment. Always changes, but this is the one at the moment. So in the no, I like saying no sometimes because that's where you learn the boundaries in life, you know. Because then what we have is we have it in the now because we need to be in the now. We need to remember not to hurt one another with an owl because as we do, then we get to know one another. It is that we owe one another because in that way it is we who all stand together. Because as it is, we're being led because everybody needs to be led because nobody knows anything when they come out of their mother. In that way, we stand on an edge of a piece of paper and then we realise that inside the know is actually the knowledge. Because as you can see, it was just the me. And in that way, it was in lots of things within the know. And you can go on forever if you wanted to. <laughs> I had to, I started a project and the project was called The Art of Conversation. And it was basically like personal quotes. My main interest in life was always people. I was always talking to you. Whenever you met me, I was always talking to you. Who are you? What are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you doing it? All of these kind of things. So in this, I was always just talking to the people about the people. But I realized that in the nature of my work, it became very much in the moment. So I started talking to the people, learning about them, and then making them bits of text specific to whatever they were telling me about themselves. If I was talking to, say for example, one person, I couldn't talk to anybody else that was in the room because it was quite intimate, this process. So I had to start something. So I started this roll of paper that you sort of that I'm sitting in, and this is called the story of everyone. So this happened on a whim. I didn't mean to, for it to be so like massive, but it was basically the shop was new. I had all this amazing product in the shop, and everybody was walking past. But it was the nature of the place. People were just used to walking around. So what I had to do was I had to stop them. If you stand outside and you say to people, "Come in," they don't come in. You know, so if you say to somebody, give me your word, you have to stop them for a second. Uh, and me, that's all I need with you. I need a second. Once I have a second, I have you. Because it's just engaging with somebody. And in this process, sort of, I used to have the roll of paper. It used to go from the middle of my room to about halfway outside. And it was one word from everybody they used to give me. And I was writing this story, which read with some sort of sense, with all these random words, one after the other. The roll of paper ended up being over a kilometre. But during this period, as they used to give me the words, I started to do weird things with the words. But also ask them about the words too. So you can imagine how many times the word love came up. But it was like, okay, I got tired of writing the word love. If I wrote the word love every time somebody gave it to me, I would have about a million loves and just like think here. Yeah. And it's boring. So I'm like, okay, fine. Tell me about the love. How do you know it's love? How do you maintain the love? Da, 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 da. And from that, what you do is you are standing there and you start to learn about the different angles of the love, the different definitions and the different ways that the people feel and look at it. And then you start to have real power. And then what you do is you write it down, you make sense of it. But what happened in this period is it did something to my brain. As in the way I started looking at the information in front of me. Because, you know, before I was a painter, a writer, a sculptor, all of these sort of things. But then I became more performance because I started engaging more people at the same time. It was like me and there was about 20, 30, 40 people. And you're talking to them and they're listening to you. And you're like, why the hell are they guys listening to me? It's just like, da, 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 da. and this is sort of what started happening. From that process with the role, I start going into the bags. So I started seeing information in the shopping bags and in sort of the hoodies and things like that. And I started cutting all of this stuff up as well with my pen. And this taught me a different way to look at the information. So now we kind of come into sort of the current now because I'm sort of, I realized that the only thing that I'm really using at the moment is this thing right here, it's my pen. I, I talk a lot, but he talks a lot more than me. But uh, that's, how he, that's how he engages people, and his work is very much part of him, I think. It's very personal. I, I like what he does. I like how, how he, he thinks, um, takes something, you know, like something you see every day, like a, a supermarket carrier bag, scrubs out some, and changes it around and, alt and alters things and I've seen him talk to people and he says I'll oh, think of a word and from that one word he'll he'll get a whole list of, of things and I just think blimey that's you know that really is an active mind up there uh, so I wonder how he gets to, how he sleeps tonight he's a performance you know he does a, it's kind of poetry what he does more than art in, in the sense of painting 
So he's very much a person with words and changing words around and altering words and you know, I think he's, he's he's very clever in what he does. He'll make a name for himself. Whatever you know, whatever he does, he's he's determined enough, and he's got a likable personality. You know. <laughs> you know, if you're an artist, you have to be number one to believe in the work. If you don't believe in it, nobody else is going to believe in it. And you know, because you put in the work out there, so again, it's in that way. You know, because you have to try and sell it to the people, or at least offer it to them in that way. So again, be confident about what you're doing, you know, explore it, put it out there. You need to put it out there. If it's only you who's talking about it, then you're not going to learn nothing, you know, and you want to learn. If not, at least you can die happy. I tried! <laughs>